How's it going guys? Another day in paradise. Absolutely pouring outside. Figured I'd say hi and post another video today. Um, want to keep talking about the Mandela effect simply because I just can't escape it, man. And like the origins of the Mandela effect. I first started noticing this back in 2011, 2012, like really noticing it. Now there were minute changes that I noticed back in 2008 with the geography of our planet, but I chalked that up to uh, me being more or less just misremembering how things were. But it turns out that, you know, people are talking about serious changes in the map as well. Um, I don't want to spend too much time talking about the changes because we all know that it's happening. If you're watching this video, you know that it's happening. So there's no way around the fact that like these changes are occurring. I want to talk about the implications of these changes and why they may be happening to the people that they're happening to. Not the cause, but why only certain people are affected. Now, how many people are familiar with the Book of Life? Um, Jehovah's Witnesses talk about this quite a bit, as well as the Gnostics and quite a few other cultures. Uh, the Egyptians mention it too. Basically, it's a premise that 144,000 sentient beings are living on this planet, and our names were written into the Book of Life. And the 144,000 of us are the only ones that are guaranteed salvation, guaranteed a trip of ascension, a trip to heaven, a trip to paradise, whatever you want to call it. And this also ties back into me talking about non-player characters, about how there's people around us that exist, but they're not conscious, they don't have a soul. So they understand what's going on around them, and they interact with us on a day-to-day -day basis, right? But they're lacking certain traits that us as humans have, that us as humans with a soul have, specifically. And those would be empathy, sympathy, moral understanding, and just the law that was written into us by the Lord himself, um, or the Creator, whatever you want to call it. Okay, because it's all the same thing, whether you want to call it the demigurd, demiurge, or whatever you want to call it, all right? The AI, I don't care what you want to call it because it's all the same thing when you break it down. But there's an inherent law that was written into our DNA, and it lets us know what is right and wrong. Anybody who is written into the book of life will know that you're not supposed to lie, cheat, steal, murder, rape commit incest, any of this stuff. We as humans that are born with a soul have this ingrained into us. Um, otherwise, how do you explain cultures around the world all having the same set of moral beliefs for the most part, um, with the exception of a few, uh, Islam being one of them? Anyway, it really doesn't matter. What I'm getting at is there's common ties between us, the 144,000. Now, if you look at TV and movies, they've been alluding to this fact for a while with shows like The 100 and then The 4400, talking about a group of 4,400 people that came back from an alien ship or whatever that have been missing for decades and decades and decades, whatever. It's alluding to the Book of Life. And what they tell you in those series is that those people were put here for a reason to effect change on our plane, to effect change in our realm, to combat something that's gone wrong. Now, I can't help but to have a really strong tie to this because I've always had a feeling I was put here for a reason. And the reason I was put here is to do exactly what I'm doing right now, and that, that's to talk to all of you guys to let you know that this feeling that you have deep inside of you was engraved into your soul. 
and not everybody around you has these feelings. That's why people call you crazy for looking into what you look into, for believing what you believe, for placing your faith in something more than yourself. A lot of people will look at you and tell you that you're absolutely mental. But the thing is, we understand that there's no way of knowing why we make this choice, right? We don't know why we place faith in this creator. We just know it's the right thing to do because it was ingrained in us. Now, the 144,000 of us that believe this way, we're put here for a reason. We had to have been. And the more we come together, the more change we can see being affected around the world. The more people that wake up to the Mandela Effect and communicate with each other, the more of us out there that actually realize this is going on, the faster the quickening is happening. And if you can't see that, all you have to do is do some basic research. Now, we're never going to know exactly what we were put here to do, right? But it's written inside of us to do it. So all we have to do is work together. Is to keep trying to decipher the messages that are being sent from this system. Now, some changes are bigger than others. Like, there's historical events that have changed. Does anybody remember the Nazis committing a terrorist attack on the Statue of Liberty during World War II. I don't ever remember being taught this, and you know, you should be, because it's just as big as Pearl Harbor, like, the Germans supposedly tried bombing the Statue of Liberty. Now, this is something that just popped up in the last six months for me, okay? But, like, how can we have a change like that, right? And then have tiny, minute changes to branding, how can tiny, minute changes to branding be a clue? Like, what are we supposed to decode from that? I'm gonna, I'm gonna put this up as a suggestion. Perhaps those logo changes aren't something for us to decipher. That's just a ping from the system to let us know that something is changing, to bring our attention to the fact that we need to pay attention to these changes and start looking for them. So, like, the Ford symbol changing, like, that doesn't really change history or anything. It doesn't affect our day-to-day -day life. But what it did is it woke a good portion of us up to the fact that things were changing. So, think about it like this. If your PlayStation 4 wants to receive an update from PlayStation Network, how is PlayStation Network going to get in touch with your PC? I mean, how's it going to get in touch with your PlayStation? It's not going to just start sending the packets for it to download because it doesn't know if it's wasting a resource by doing that. It doesn't know if your PlayStation is active. It doesn't know if you have a connection. So sending all of that information at once without knowing your PlayStation is receiving anything, right? It's a waste of data. It's a waste of energy. And it's a waste of time if your PlayStation's not there to receive the information, right? So think about it like this. What if something or someone in the system used the tiny changes in order to get the 144,000's attention, right? What if those minute changes were just to make us aware that something's going on in order for us to affect change on something bigger? So, everything up until now, I have a feeling has just been the system pinging us Letting us know that we need to prepare for the download that's coming. Letting us know that things are about to change big time. Now, if that's the case, we really need to start evaluating our position in this game. Because we're here for a reason. And if you're aware of this, your part to play is bigger than you think. So what we need to do is we need to start coming together and bouncing ideas off of each other. And what I'm going to suggest is that you get away from what the mainstream media has been putting out there as far as why the Mandela Effect is happening. They want you to think that it has something to do with CERN or D-Wave. Now don't get me wrong, it very well might, okay? But I just find it very hard to believe that that's the cause because the mainstream media, including CERN, has been pushing this idea out there. 
Why would a physicist at CERN even mention Mandela in a video at all? Unless it was some sort of propaganda. Because if they were really behind this, they wouldn't want us knowing that they are. Right? So just think about it with an open mind for a minute, guys. Think about it. The Book of Life says that there's only 144,000 people that are guaranteed entrance into paradise. I want you to think about the percentage of people that you know that have woken up to this fully. I'm talking about 100% down for the ride, believes it no matter what, and knows that their thoughts and memories have been altered. Because I bet you, I bet you, the number is close to 144,000 worldwide. I'm talking full-fledged believers, not somebody on the fence, but a full-fledged, yes, I think this is real. I'm just going to leave you with that for today. Something simple, something short, but it's a lot to think about, man. Have a good day, guys. God bless. Feel free to leave comments, questions, concerns, anything you want, man. I'm here for you. Always will be. Have a good one.